Hey guys, it's Nicole and I'm back and today I'm going to show you how to make apple squash soup and lentil loaf. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, so in this pot I have two cups of lentil, I have celery, I have a half, one stalk of celery, a half of an onion, two thick stalks of green onion, and three baby portobello mushrooms, okay? And I sauteed it all together at first with a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, okay? And after the onions have started to you know, get kind of that clear consistency, you can kind of start seeing through it, that's when I start to add the water. And I can't even tell you the exact measurement of water. I add enough water that it will totally cover everything. Um, and right now you can see the water is drying down, but that's okay because it's almost done. But when you're cooking this, you want to cook it, I cook on like medium high and I continue to add water enough water so that you see this line where the entire thing is covered. You don't want it to burn and you want it to have enough liquid to, to cook in. But as it's starting to finish cooking, as you can see, I'm not really adding any more water because it's almost done. To season this, I add cumin, curry powder, black pepper, sea salt. Um, and that's pretty much it. You add more or less to your liking. Um, and I just continue to let it simmer until it is tender. And when it is totally tender, that's when I will start putting together the loaf. So in this pot right here is my apple butternut squash soup. It is so good, okay? Um, I learned this recipe when I was doing a detox. Um, if you've ever seen the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, the guy who was the um, person who did the documentary, he came up with a a program for detoxing and if you want to do a detox where you can actually eat he actually provides lots of recipes and this is one of the recipes and I've modified it um, but pretty much ever since I had it for that detox I have just been making it regularly because it's just so 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 good okay so pretty much the ingredients are one apple I used a Jana gold apple I used one butternut squash I used about three stalks of um, green onion one large stalk of celery chopped up and I used the apple and um, an onion, half of a white onion. And I put all of that together on the pot and let it just boil. Now the, the, the butternut squash, I roasted in the oven separately from everything else. So I drizzled some extra virgin olive oil on that. And then I let that cook on 400 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. And then you'll know when it's done, when the it starts to get golden brown, and it starts to get all bubbly on the top, um, and you can just smell it, and it's delicious. And I just, after everything that's been boiling, the apple, the onion, the green onion, the celery, after all that has been boiling, and I add my sea salt, and I add my cumin, and I add um, some nutmeg and a hit of ginger, okay, because it just really does something. The ginger with the apple is really good. I combine everything. After the butternut squash is cooked, I just combine it all my Vitamix. I just blend it until it's pretty much just liquidy, but it's a thicker liquid, as you can tell. It's so good. It's so good. And it's just gonna go really great with this lentil loaf once I'm done making these lentils. Okay, so the lentils are cooked. I just turned off the stove. And now to this bowl, I added a cup of panko breadcrumbs and a cup of rolled oats, quick oats, rolled quick oats. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I might season this a little bit, maybe with a little bit of like um, a multi-purpose, all-purpose seasoning. The seasoning that I like to use is Goya adobo. I don't know if you can see that a little off focus, but Goya adobo with with pepper. That's why the lid is red because it's with pepper. Um, I'll drizzle a little bit that in, add that in there so that there's flavor throughout. I like to flavor every layer of everything that I put into my food. So if there's different layers of things and if I'm adding different things, I like to add a little seasoning to that just to make sure that it's, it's nice and flavorful. Um, 
So the lentils are going to go in here. There's just the right amount of water left over so that everything will bind together. Now this is a vegan meal, so I don't add eggs to my lentil loaf. I know some people might do stuff like that. When I'm making something vegan, I don't add eggs to it. So I'm relying on the reserved liquids from the lentils to bind well with the panko breadcrumb and the rolled oats. If I need more moisture, what I would do is add some extra virgin olive oil. So this is what it looks like when the rolled oats, the panko breadcrumbs, and the lentils are all together combined. As you can see, the smoke is rising from <laughs> the bowl. And I mix it all together well. And this is the consistency that you're going to get. As you can see, you can still see the lentils, but it's well blended in with everything else. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this all into my loaf. So I sprayed my loaf pan with this Healthy Chef butter. Oh, out of focus. Butter artificial butter flavored um, cooking spray there's no real butter in here it's just an artificial whatever an artificial butter flavor is made of but <laughs> um, that's what I put in there so that everything doesn't stick so whenever I cut my lentil loaf everything will come out properly so I'm going to go ahead and spoon that into there so as you can see this recipe perfectly makes one loaf one loaf like one exact loaf okay so um for my topping some people like to do a combination of like um ketchup or barbecue sauce and stuff like that it really depends on what you're in the mood for you could put barbecue sauce on it if you want um today this is something i tried last time because i didn't have barbecue sauce and i didn't have any tomato sauce and i didn't have any ketchup so i use salsa and i know this probably sounds so nasty but let me tell you something about the salsa with the curry it was amazing okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to mix a little bit of salsa with a tiny bit of um tomato sauce just so it's not so chunky because this is a chunky salsa and i'm going to spread it on top of here and then what i'm doing is i'm going to let it bake in the oven for about 35 minutes and then i'm going to put it on a low broil so i get a slight little simmer a little browning on top and it's going to be so delicious and it's going to look beautiful